So this is Joshua Gillahan, and he was my only child. He was only 14, and he was our world. I honestly can't comprehend why this is not an absolute national emergency. I don't know why we're not having press conferences from the White House, just like we did for COVID, regarding um, this fentanyl crisis. I don't know why on everyone's TV, there's not a scrolling banner at the bottom, you know, warning everyone that nothing is safe unless it comes from a pharmacy. You know, I, I just, I can't comprehend why a bigger deal is not being made of this situation. Really, we started having some issues, noticing some changes um, around the seventh grade. So he was about 12. And my husband, when him and his friends came home from being out and about, um, he just suspected something was weird because we had to go somewhere and my son ran upstairs real quick to put his backpack away and that was kind of weird. So my husband wondered what was in the backpack and he ended up finding some marijuana in the backpack. We had many talks even before this happened about drugs in general and you know you could you have your path to choose your choices make a difference and all of that many many talks and so of course we started that again and you know tried to do everything we could to explain to him why we were so upset he really felt like you know pot wasn't that big of a deal marijuana what's the big deal it's all natural you know blah 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 so we started you know having more talks and of course keeping him under a tighter rain. Um, we even started um, counseling, trying to figure out what was causing him to want to, you know, do, you know, self-medicate or what have you. So we did that for a long time, and then it was just a battle. It was a battle for a year and a half. We'd find it, he'd get in trouble. It was just kind of back and forth, on and on. I don't know really all the details yet, but at some point, he apparently got some um, what he thought was Percocet, and. We didn't find this out until after he passed away. And so um, so I don't know if he did that because we were testing him for THC or what really happened, but one morning um, I was leaving to go on a business trip and I walked up the stairs to, um, to say goodbye. And he didn't answer. And so I got closer and, you know, I leaned down to kind of like, you know, shake him and and wake him up and he was gone ah! and he had been gone for a long time he was really cold oh my god was already at work so you know first you're in disbelief you know you're like his room was always really cold and we'd gotten a new AC system and so at first I thought we just need to yeah. warm him up you know yeah. <laughs> just crazy thoughts but I knew he was gone But I, I wish I would have done more. I so wish I would have joined these groups that I'm in now so I could have shown him, you know, the young people that this is that, that have died, you know, um, 
you know, I just, I didn't even realize, even as a parent, you know, I didn't really realize the depths of it. And I, and that's a lot of the guilt, you know, that I have is that um, we thought we had our problem under control. And I, I didn't let my, I didn't let myself go to the next level. I mean, I literally was worried about him damaging his brain from marijuana. I never dreamed that he was gonna take something that, could, that was gonna kill him. <laughs> he, my kid was not perfect, but he was a good kid. He was smart, he was good, he was loving. He was a good kid. And there are a lot of kids like him that are probably doing similar things and their parents don't know it. They're thinking, not my kid. And everybody needs to understand that it can be your kid. If it was my kid, it could be anybody's kid. You have to do something, you know. I figure, you know, if I'm going to stay on this planet, then I don't want his death to be in vain. <laughs> if we can save others from going through this, that's what I want to do.